All right, welcome to the next video. Um, the goal for today is uh, we already have the ability to sort of create a venue, um, but an important part of venue is obviously like its place in the world, its latitude and longitude, its address, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's not something we want people to necessarily type out, like no one's gonna know the latitude and longitude of their favorite bar. They're going to maybe want to search for it through the Google Places API. Um, Google Place API, there is some great Flutter SDKs and stuff for it. Um, however, um, the biggest problem with using that is it actually doesn't work in web because of cores issues and stuff. Um, so generally the approach is you need to run the request through a proxy server. Um, now, because we're building our own backend, um, we can essentially just do that ourselves. Uh, so we're actually gonna do the integration fully server side where it actually goes out, um, calls, um, the Google Places API, normalizes the data, sends it back to the client. That way, whether we're doing this on iOS, Android, or web, we don't have to worry about cores issues because we already you know, have that handled. Um, cores issues are basically like browser security stuff, cross origin request security, something like that. Um, you can look it up, but it's usually an annoying thing. And, um, and one way to deal with it is to proxy. Another way is to just do it from your backend um, because your backend isn't a browser and it won't have core security built in. So uh, I did do a little bit of research looking up, um, you know, Flutter Google Place SDK. I've used this before, uh, but again, this is really like meant for Flutter. It's meant, uh, you know, to be called directly from iOS and Android. Um, so I've actually landed on, rather than, you know, using one of these SDKs, because uh, it's overkill and also like might not even work uh, when we're running it server side, uh, we're going to just integrate um, the Google Maps Places API uh, through its normal like REST API. And we'll be doing that um, on the server pod uh, backend side. And then um, the idea is from the client, you talk to server pod, server pod goes and talks to Google, comes back, comes back. It's gonna be this little like little thing. Um, so nothing crazy, nothing out of the ordinary. This is a pretty normal thing um, that you might need to do. I have never done this specific thing before. Uh, I, have pro I have had to do proxies with Google, with this exact thing, but this is gonna be a little bit different because we're actually go, we're not just gonna be like proxying the call through a, you know, a proxy server we're gonna actually like do the call from our back end. So uh, let's figure this out. Um, and uh, you know, due to the nature of this project, there's a good chance that uh, you know, and we're gonna go through and uh, refactor and there's gonna be problems and we're gonna fix it and uh, it's all gonna be great. Um, but I think that's cool because I think it's cool to kind of show the process. Like, you know, one thing that's sometimes annoying about watching YouTube tutorials uh, people making things is it makes them seem like they're really smart. It's like, oh my God, they know everything. It's because, you know, generally and myself too, I've already made it. I, I made the same project and now I'm just doing it again. Um, so this, you know, and, and part of the exercise, obviously of this uh, series in general is kind of seeing the actual path and the flow um, as opposed to just having a finished project and, and mirroring it. So uh, without further ado, um, I think for this, we're going to make a I feel like this could be part of the venue endpoint. Um, I'm just trying to think if anything else needs geolocation. Like we could make a whole other endpoint for like Google places or location and stuff like that. But I think for now, let's just do it in the venue endpoint. We already have it. So um, yeah, we're just gonna go down here. This is gonna be a future of, um, let's just do dynamic for now. This will change. Um, we're going to go search for place. And of course, um, we need our general session. And uh, we're going to need a string of the, uh, we'll call it query. Uh, so that, that'll be what the user is searching. And um, cool, then we're going to actually call this API. So I'm just going to uh, essentially make something called final URL equals, and we'll just do a string. Um, and uh, what we need to do is actually have an API key, which we're gonna get to in a minute. I'll just put like API key here. And then, um, do, 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 what, it, maybe this isn't actually the right, uh, let's see, places API. Okay, wait, places API, accept standard URL with, do, do, do. Um, let's do, okay, let's just do find a place. This is what we really want. Find a place, return to subset, do, do, do. Okay, find a place from text. Uh, let's see. You know what? There's a lot of <laughs> Google documentation is annoying. And uh, something that's great that ex has existed for the last little while is things like ChatGPT, because we can just, you know, kind of get to the bottom of this without having to read a bunch of stuff, which is super helpful. Um, I don't trust ChatGPT 
in general in terms of like, oh, I'm just going to like do what it says, but it usually gets you kind of like a starting point that then you can, you know, debug. So we'll do something like using the Google Places REST API. How can I search for a place via text? So here we go. We get a little bit of stuff. Um, I could have probably said, you know, doing it in Dart or whatever, but um, this will be enough for us to understand. See, here we go. This is essentially what we want. Oh, there, it's using Ruby. That's an interesting, uh, interesting thing. So let's just grab this. Uh, so here, query. Okay, perfect. This is what we want. Assuming it works. You know, we can't trust it completely, but if it works, it works. So we'll have our query here. Um, we'll probably also want to do something to um, make this query uh, URL safe. Um, so we'll get to that, and we'll have something for API key, which uh, for now, I'm just going to go const API key equals change me. We're going to actually you know, get a real one in a bit. But basically, we're going to call that. Um, so wait, they're doing it. In, OK, so it's like. I don't know why it's saying Ruby there. Um, Python, so search places, we have the params. Okay. Da -da -da. Yeah, that's one way to do it too, actually. Um, okay, that's the general idea. Now, we need to make an API call fr from this. And we don't actually have something like HTTP or DO installed, I don't think. Uh, let's just see. It might already come with it. Um, package, I don't think DO would, but possibly. It does, okay. So we can just use the HTTP library. Now it is giving me this warning because it's not actually part of something we've installed, but it is part of ServerPod, so uh, we have access to it. So we'll just use that. Um, well, part of me wants to use DO because we're using DO in the front end. Yeah, let's use DO. Screw it. We can use DO. It's it's a Dart package. It's not a Flutter package. Uh, so in here, we can go Dart pub add DO. And I'm just going to um, kind of... Can you um, redo this with Dart server side? Uh, or I'll just say like peer Dart with Do, not Flutter. There we go. Now we'll get something that's a little bit closer. So yeah, it's saying install Do. Yeah, of course we're doing that now. Um, we'll make our do. Yeah, we'll do this. Cool. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna copy this because it's actually pretty close to what we want. Uh, so let's just grab this and uh, let's go and put this here. Um, so we'll import do, which hopefully uh, we'll get access to. There we go. And uh, API key. We're just gonna do change me. We're gonna have to get build an API key in a bit. Um, do -do -do. Okay, this is just going to print the stuff. That's fine enough for testing. And at the very end of this, let's just return. Let's just return, um, you know, something like cool. Um, and uh, we'll just make this a string, um, which I think I have this in the wrong spot. It should be right there. Oops, right there. Okay, so we now have this search for place um, sort of thing. Uh, we do need an API key though. So we are going to go to uh, Google. Um, Google Cloud APIs. I forgot how to get there. Oh, this looks <laughs> this looks about right. Um, and what I want to do is actually go to the console and do, 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 do. What we want to do now is um, we're going to make. I guess we'll just make a new project. Uh, do, do, dashboard. Okay, let's see. Project. I think there's a way to make a new project in here. Okay, we're going to call this Open Mic and create it. It's creating the project for us. All right, select that project. Then I think we just have to search for like Google Places, Places API. And for this project, we want to enable it. And um, oh, building account. Yeah, I just want to use my normal one. Enable to enable building. Okay, I'm just gonna use another one that. Um, what is this one? Okay, cool. We got an API key. 
Um, yeah, you're seeing this on the stream, you're seeing this in the recording, that's fine. Uh, I will be, you know, before we put this out, you know, this uh, will be um, rotated. Um, if you are lucky enough to grab it, you know, and you can launch something really quick before I rotate it uh, that uses Google Maps uh, places, um, go for it, you know, challenge accepted. Okay, so that's going to be our API key. Um, select restrictions. So I could actually put uh, restrictions and stuff on this. Now, API restriction, um, that's just, okay, that's just for that. Um, I'm not going to worry about that. We'll get into, you know, making it like more secure. Okay, so we'll enable the API. And I'm just going to, for now, we're going to put this in a better place, but I'm just going to put this here for now. There's that lovely API key. And um, I think that might be enough. Okay, so to test this out, there's a couple ways we could do it, but let's uh, start by running a server pod uh, generate, because this will just generate our new search for place endpoint with our client. I'm going to kill this terminal just so we can see this better. And then um, back on the Flutter side, um, let's go into, where's a good place to put this? Uh, well, I guess, mm, 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 mm. oh, then you're not found, then you're not found. Oh, because I stopped my server. Let's, uh, let's start our server. Um, I just want to have a place to kind of play. So I think what we'll do is we'll actually go to the venue um, uh, list screen. Uh, venue, I think we call it root screen. Yeah. And we have this, um, <clears throat> we should have a uh, yeah, floating action button. So we're going to change what this does just temporarily, just so we can have a place to push it. And uh, we're going to go into our uh, venue uh, service. And we're going to make a new endpoint here which will kind of do the same sort of thing. It'll be either, um, and we'll do dynamic, because I'm not sure what this will look like yet. Uh, sorry, it'll be a string if it's an error. Otherwise, it'll be dynamic. We'll change this. We're going to have some um, something that normalizes that data. And we'll just call it search for place. We'll keep it the same. And here, we need to have a string of a query. Make it async. And uh, we can, yeah, do a try. We can do final. Um, I'll just do data equals await client dot venue dot. Now we probably won't see the search for place in here yet. See, we don't see it. And it's because just the way we're kind of running our projects and our editors, we have them open as two separate things. We don't have the client open. Um, so generally to get around this, if we actually just kind of command click on this and like kind of follow it through a bit, we should, you know, see the search for place in here. And then usually by that point, the VS code realizes, oh, there is something there. So there you go. Um, restarting your ID, we'll fix that too, but that's, you know, obviously a lot longer. Um, and, um, okay, so we'll just do that for now and then let's just print out data, sure. Um, and maybe we'll in here return a write of data, um, which works because it's dynamic. This is, or this is actually a string. Um, so we can actually make this a string for now. Um, otherwise, if something goes wrong, uh, catch E. Uh, we can return left of e dot to string. Okay, so that's enough for us to uh, actually, you know, sort of play with this. So save everything, and then here um, we are just going to go uh, ref dot read. Oh, I don't have ref in here, do I? What are we inside right now? Mm, I don't really want to. Yeah, we'll just convert this to a um, consumer widget then. And uh, widget ref ref. So now I have access to ref. So we can go ref dot read, and we want to read our venue service provider. Um, and here we would go search for place, and let's just search for you know, um, let's search for CN Tower, which I feel like should work. Uh, that's a lovely Toronto landmark that I'm sure maybe you've heard of. All right, so let's just open this because uh, we're just going to be printing stuff. We're only going to get cool back, you know, no matter what happens. I mean, likely we'll just get the cool back <laughs> unless something really breaks. Uh, but let's just see what happens. Uh, so if I click this button here, we get cool back. So something something worked. And here we actually see CN Tower, 290 Bremner Boulevard, Toronto. I know it's probably a little bit small. Um, I can probably go one bigger for a moment. So it must be printing, yeah, this right here, the formatted address. Now, um, there's definitely more data than this. So let's actually take a look at um, what this is. And um, let's just print the whole place. Uh, sorry, place. However, um, actually, yeah, that should be enough for us to see. Uh, so let's print the place. 
Now we will have to restart our server. We don't have to generate again, but we made a code change, so we have to restart our server. And what are we doing here? Let's try clicking it. So now we actually get the real data back. Now something we can do, because it's not actually printing like JSON, it's kind of printing the Dart interpretation of like the map that came back. Um, we can do JSON in code to place. This is just like a fun little trick that uh, is super helpful on uh, you know really any project. Um, so let's just do this again because what this will now print is actually like a more prettier version, um, you know, proper JSON. So you'll see we actually get it with the quotations and stuff around it. So I'm actually going to grab this entire thing and make just a new file. Uh, I'm going to save this, not even inside the project, just to like my temp directory on my computer. And we'll just call it like uh, places.json, just enough so it like formats as JSON. Um, and there we have it. We can actually see stuff about it. So this is cool. Um, we have a uh, business status. Don't really care so much about that necessarily. Uh, we have a formatted address. We have its geometry. So this is where we can get its latitude and longitude, which is super hand handy. Hmm, interesting viewport for the map. Um, I don't think we care about that. Um, yeah, I feel like what we do, 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 do. in fact, if we made, uh, cause what, what is it? Oh, I can't even go to it now, but I can edit one. I think, no, I can't. Um, <laughs> I'm just thinking if there's a flow, maybe like maybe the way we make this UX work is you actually first do the Google Place search and it gets us back this really nice data, um, which then we can use to almost like pre-fill the form with the name, um, you know, a photo when we get to that. Um, yeah, what does this photo look like? Uh, that's not a photo. Um, oh, that's the HTML attribution. What is the photo reference? Photos, height. Where's the actual photo? Okay, I don't know what that is. We will ignore that. We have a place ID, and that's something we might want to store, um, which is cool. Um, but yeah, let's just get, uh, let's sort of get some basics here working. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So yeah, the things I care about, I think, are the name, the latitude, the longitude, the formatted address. Um, It'd be cool if there was an image. I just don't understand how this image thing sort of works. Um, that's fine. Okay, so what I want to do now is let's actually create a model now called, um, we'll call it like Google Place, um, Google Place, probably just that, dot spy dot YAML. Again, spy, just server pod YAML gives us the nice color coding and everything. Now, um, let's just grab the example one, or we don't even need that. Uh, we know how to do this. So class, we're going to call this Google Place. And its um, fields are going to be, let's have name, which is a string. We can have latitude, which is a double. Longitude, longitude, which is a double. Um, oh, I'm missing a space here. I think that's why that's complaining. Yeah. And then... Um, we can have address, which is going to be a string. We can have, oh, let's also have the place ID. That just might be something good to have. And I'm going to actually make that first uh, place ID. Um, we could call it ID, but I'm going to call it place ID in case we end up making this a database driven field at some point. Place, and we should just do place ID. Place ID is a string. Um, hey, there's a rating we can get. That's kind of cool. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, OK, so you'll notice um, compared to like our hub or anything else that uses a table, uh, we're not going to have a table here, at least not now. We may end up deciding like, oh, it's maybe we want to store these in the database. But I don't think so. I think by storing, uh, we'll end up storing this on the venue. And that's enough for us to always like resync and get this data rather than like having it stored and duplicated. Uh, so um, this is just going to be a simple model that can be serialized and deserialized. So we do have to run our generator for that to generate the dark code for Google Place. And then in our venue endpoint, instead of returning dynamic, uh, we're going to return Google Place. Um, and uh, so in here, oh, it, sorry, this will actually return rather a list of Google Place. Um, 
okay, cool. So we have errors. Um, we're going to get into like error handling, logging and throwing stuff and whatever. Um, so instead, uh, we're just going to return just an empty list anytime there's an error. And eventually we'll, you know, make that better. Uh, we're not going to return anything there. Instead, we're going to return here. So we get the results back. Um, and uh, what we could do is make, there's a couple ways to do this. Let's just do it the most basic way first. Google places equals just an empty list. And we want to mark this as a list of Google place, which this is our own model, right? This is the generated code for this thing that we just made with the things we care about. And um, right here, what we can do is we can go Google places dot um, add. Um, and we will just basically need to kind of make our own um, um, way to do this. Uh, so we'll do Google place. Now we could do from JSON, um, which let's actually look at what that is, because there might be, see, we get these sort of things back. Um, this is one way to do it, but our data is not coming back this way. So although we could convert to this way, it's kind of like an extra step. So I don't think we'll use the from JSON um, in this case. We're just going to construct a Google place. Uh, we don't need that. And here we need to get the place ID. So to do this, uh, let's just open up that JSON file again. Do I, uh, yeah, places. So the first thing we need is the place ID, which is just called place ID. So we just go, um, this will be place, place ID. Um, and maybe, I wonder if we can name these better. No, this is fine. Um, now we want, um, what's the next thing we want? Latitude. So let's get latitude. And this will be place geometry location lat. And similarly, we can do long here for longitude. Um, we have an address, and that just comes from place formatted address. And uh, I think name was the last one. Name, and I think it's just probably name. Let's just make sure. Name, yep. Okay, I think we got all the things we need. So basically, we now have all these being put in a list. Uh, we're just going to add at least one of these. That's a little bit nicer. And what we want to do at the very end after looping through those is actually return the Google Places. Um, now, this could have been done in, you know, as a map on this data, uh, but I think this is totally fine and clean and, and you know, totally understandable. So we'll do that. Um, now, I do not need to run, unless I made a change. I did make a change. Yeah. Okay. We do have to run the generate again because we changed uh, what actually returns from here, which our client needs to know. If all we're doing is editing code in here, we don't have to actually generate. It's just when we're making a change to basically like this line here. Um, what is, you know, what the input is and what the output is, the shape of it. Uh, so let's run this again. And now if we go to our client side, uh, instead of returning a string um, when stuff is right, we are actually going to return a Google place. Now, similar as before, uh, we're not getting this auto import uh, because we kind of have to click through and make it realize what this is. Um, so let's, I believe we go by going to a venue, um, oh, this is its own file, so that might not work. Uh, we want to go like one file up. Um, let's see. Or we can like kind of search through here, protocol, and look for Google Place. Just by opening that, we should now have Google Place. We don't. That's weird. Google Place isn't a type. But it is. Look, Google Place. Google Place. It's right here. It's right here, guys. Let's just try typing it again. And we'll try a little light bulb. Uh, okay, let's save this. Let's reopen that file. Uh, yeah, this is one of the annoying things though, just the way we're doing this. If again, if we had this all open in one IDE, this usually is not never a problem. Um, let me just try again. Venue. Let's go Google Place, Hub. Just kind of trick it for a bit. I think maybe we might be. Oh no, we're still, still not coming back, eh? All right, um, so what I can do usually, uh, let's just try doing a restart. Um, I don't think I need to restart the analysis server. I could, that might kick it into gear. Yeah, let's just try that first. Okay, so we're restarting. Um, it may have worked, it may not have. I, yeah, I think we're good. So restarting the analysis server seems good. Now I'm curious, by doing that, do we miss out on um, well, I think actually we're fine. We don't lose our connection to the iOS. Okay, that's cool. 
Okay, so data coming back, we get a list of Google places, and that's actually what we need to return here, right? We're gonna send back a list. Um, all right, wicked. So now we actually have a way to try this, and uh, let's actually just print out the data here, just so we can actually see what it looks like client side. Um, and click this. So I search for CN Tower because we kind of hard coded that and I actually get back this list. And although this is JSON right here, this is just the way server pods built in like two string works. It just kind of converts it back to JSON so you can see it and that works for me. Um, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, we're getting places back, which is really nice. So let's actually figure out how we want to work with this because obviously just hard coding CN Tower is not really the approach. And we'll put this back as it was. And yeah, I'm kind of thinking we want to do something where when you're adding a venue, um, I wonder if we could just do it on. Yeah, let's, let's do something where we actually essentially ask the user to provide. Um, yeah, Cause let me think, let me think. When we're creating one of these, we can get the name. Wait, was there something for that would actually be helpful if we could like almost pre-fill that stuff. I know we won't get the Instagram, but I wonder if the website's in there. Uh, let's just search for, it doesn't look like. There might be a way in um, query parameters. I think we can get more information if we, uh... I'm gonna ask ChatGPT. Okay. Let's see if that's even possible. You can make a place detail request in addition. So we do, we get the place IDs and then we actually call and get it. Now that could be overkill because um, if we have to do it for every response that comes back just to get that, that's you know a lot. Um, we could do something where we made a secondary call once the user picked one. Um, that's not a terrible idea, um, but I think this is yeah something we can come back to in the future um, just to kind of keep moving. Uh, but we can definitely get the venue name. Um, like I wonder what other data we get back here. Name, address, we already have address. Let me just double check website isn't in here because that would, yeah, it's not, uh, it is not. Okay, let's not worry about that. Um, because we're not, you know, Instagram URL to me is actually more important anyways and we're, I doubt we're gonna be able to get that easily from, from this, let people type it in. Okay, so yeah, I'm thinking what we do is we, um, make that a little bigger, smaller. We want to request them to essentially start typing in, um, you know, a thing. So I think we're going to make a screen that essentially is, uh, or at least a component. Um, mm, Let's make it a screen, at least for now. Uh, it'll be probably a screen with a component in it. So let's just have a uh, new file called venue. Uh, or really, this is like, yeah, this is almost separate from venue because it could be used for other things. But let's just keep it in venue for now. But we're not going to call it venue search screen. We're call it, uh, let's actually call it Google Place Search Screen because that's what it is. And I don't intend on ever using a different, you know, we're going to use Google Places. Like, that's what's going to work. That's the norm. That's what Instagram uses. That's what everything uses. So. I don't really uh, care about making this more agnostic. Uh, Google Play search screen. So we'll just make this a stateless consumer, um, a consumer widget, and we'll call it Google Place search screen. And I'll just import in some important things. And here we will return a scaffold, and all is good. Uh, app bar, we'll just have an app bar. It'll be actions, uh, or not actions, sorry, uh, title, uh, text of, what do we want? Um, search for, search for a place. Sure. Um, we'll probably make that configurable when you, when we pass, when we go to the screen or something. Um, search for a place works though. 
Okay, now um, what we want is we want a component that's actually going to represent that. So we're going to have a Google Place Search component dot dart. And similarly, uh, and in fact, I'm just going to copy all this, change this to Google, uh, I guess just change this to the word component. Uh, this will not return a scaffold. Instead, it's going to you know, probably return like a list view, list view dot builder, which we will um, figure out shortly. Now, um, I want to manage this through a provider. We don't want to be like using set state and all that stuff. So we are going to make a provider called uh, Google place um, search provider and um, yeah let's uh, figure this out so this is going to essentially be a river pod provider um, let's call it Google place search and it's going to extend something that is going to be auto generated called Google place search um, We'll denote this with at riverpod. We don't necessarily have to do a keep alive on this. You know, the search can kind of get removed anytime someone leaves the screen that's using it. So that's all fine. Um, Google Play Search, and we need a build function. And this is going to return a list of Google Place right here. Um, and initially, we're just going to return nothing because when this gets instantiated, there'll be nothing. Uh, we need to also mark this as override. Um, yep, yeah, that should be fine. Uh, build, we also, I think, no, we don't get ref in there. I think that's fine. And then we have to remember, of course, to make this part of Google Place Search Provider dot G dot Dart. So I'm going to save that. We're going to run our generator. I'm going to run it with, should I run it with watch? Nah, I think this, we'll just do a one-off run. My project isn't that big yet, so this is pretty quick, reasonably. Cool. Um, we'll save that, come back to it, whatever. Uh, okay, so we have this now. Uh, and what we can do is we can actually have a method called search. It's going to be a future void. It's not actually going to return anything. It's going to just operate and replace its state. And here is essentially, uh, oh, we need a, you know, a query to be passed in. So here we would just await um, our ref.read um, venue service provider dot search for place. And we pass in that query. And uh, we can go final um, result equals this. Now remember, this could be an error or this could be you know, a list. So we want to do a result.fold. And if there's an error, let's just, um, for now, let's just print out the error and we'll deal with that later. Um, otherwise, um, if we have, um, what would be, these would be called, we can call them places, I guess. Places, places. So you'll see this is that list of Google places. Uh, we can then just make the state equal to places. Um, and maybe in this case, we actually make the state equal to this. Now we might, there's going to be something I think we do to this that's going to be pretty cool, um, just to make it uh, a little more useful for errors and stuff. But let's just try and get this working, um, you know, in the next few minutes, because I, um, I don't want this video to be so long. Okay, so now that we have this, um, basically inside our component, let's make, let's get access to our provider. That's going to be ref.read, and we'll use our Google place search provider dot notifier dot notifier and that's going to get let us have access to things like the query then um, we're going to have something called we'll just call it state and this is what we'll be watching but we're going to watch the provider's data itself not the notifier so you'll see this is actually a list of google places so now in our item builder we can do something really cool uh so what is it context um in, uh index i think uh we need to also make sure we have a count here item count and uh, this will be state dot length. Uh, and maybe we call this just um, places. Um, results, maybe. So results dot length is that. And uh, what we can do inside here is we can get something called uh, place is going to be equal to results. Um, and uh, we just want to get it at that index because it's going to be looping through there. 
So that's gonna be one instance of a Google Place. And yeah, maybe we, again, just return a list tile. Um, we're not too worried about our UI. Uh, we will be doing custom UI at some point, but functionality first. Uh, in the title, uh, we can put text and we can use the place.name or something just to test that out. Um, now, uh, also on here, um, this is the search component. So we're gonna wrap this in a column and we're gonna wrap the list.builder in an expanded because we want this to take up as much room as possible. But on top of it, we actually want a search bar. So we could use like a text form input, uh, but I think there is like a search bar um, widget, which actually I don't even know if I've used this before, but I've seen it. Uh, and I don't really know how it works, um, but we can figure it out. Um, on submitted, well, let's just see what this even looks like. Um, okay, so we'll just save everything. Uh, we need a way to get to this screen and we need this to exist. So we have our search place component and our search place screen. So we need to make sure in our scaffold, our body of it is the Google Place search place component, whatever. Um, now we need a way to get to here. So what we can do is, I guess we need a route for this. So let's go to our venue routes, um, venue routes. And uh, we have the edit screen. Um, we're going to create another one. Um, so let's make sure we have our, uh, Google Play search screen. Um, so let's make sure we have our static, um, how do we actually do this again? Uh, let's just look at another example, static string route. Um, and uh, we don't need any parameters for this one. So it's just gonna be, we're gonna use the venue route, uh, venue space, but oops. Uh, we're gonna basically take this like that, uh, import this guy and we'll just do search, we'll call it search. Okay, so now we have a way uh, to essentially get to it. So let's also make a go route. I'm doing it before the edit because it kind of just makes sense. And this will be uh, Google Play search screen dot um, route. And uh, for its builder, um, we are just ultimately returning this. Context state, we don't care about because there's no parameters, at least yet. So we can kind of do that. So now um, an R, wherever we had that plus button, I'm closing everything, it's necessary, uh, venue root screen. So instead of going to um, here, we're actually going to just duplicate this and we're gonna go to venue or uh, Google Play search screen dot route and we don't have to pass anything in. Let's see if that works. Uh, so click plus and we have this lovely search screen. Uh, that doesn't seem right. What happened there? Maybe, let's just rebuild. Oh, wow. Child path ends with this, not true. Okay, okay, yeah, we made a mistake. Um, let's just go to our Google Play search screen. I think it's just a, yeah, there shouldn't be a trailing slash here, I think is what's happening. Yay, okay, search. And now we have the search screen, which uh, <laughs> something's wrong. Something is definitely wrong here. Um, is it, okay, so we have an app bar, what? Am I not going to the right thing? Uh, let's go to the routes. Uh, like, shouldn't I have a title in here that says search for a place? Venue routes, um, Google places search screen. Yeah, if we go here, this route is slash search, which is what we're calling here. Uh, Google places search screen dot route. Yeah, so we're doing that. And we should be returning this, but I might've messed something up. Nope. This seems fine. What? <laughs> okay, let's look at our search screen again. And this is a build function, consumer widget. Uh, we have a scaffold. Why don't I have, uh, okay, I'm just gonna get rid of the body. Maybe the body is breaking it or something. Click here. That is so strange. Okay, we have a scaffold. <laughs> um, okay, let's just do body. It's probably this, anytime this kind of stuff happens, I can just tell it's like, I'm just doing something really stupid. Uh, is it because I'm pushing and not, I don't think so. Unless we might be go, let's look at our routes again. There might be like, oh, so we have the detail, you know what's happening? Yeah, I believe what is happening, I believe. If we look at this venue detail screen route, it is, the namespace slash kind of like an ID. And uh, what we need to do is actually put this route first to kind of like override that. Like if specifically the word 
search comes in, we're going to go to this route. Then it will fall back to just this dynamic parameter. Um, I think that will fix our problem. Uh, so let's click add. Yeah, search for a place. Yay. So let's look at this and let's get rid of this and put this back in and see if we have a bit of a search. Um, okay, cool. We have a search bar. Wow, that's the ugliest search bar I've ever seen. Um, so let's uh, let's <laughs> maybe make it prettier. Um, again, not really worried about UI right now, but um, you know that looks kind of weird. Uh, search bar. Do they have like a search bar dot? No. Okay. So well, first of all, let's put a bit of padding around it. It's kind of ugly like that. I'll seem to figure out why it's pushing me back anytime that happens. Um, let's use some symmetric padding. Let's just do it horizontally, 16. Um, is there some, something, is there like elevation? Yeah, let's just put, oh, how do you do elevation? Uh, do, 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 elevation. This dot elevation. Um, I forgot how to do this. Material state property. Because I don't remember. Um, <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. Flutter search bar elevation. Um, boom. Uh, okay, whatever. We're not going to worry about that right now. No, try not to worry about UI because like, we could get lost. This video could be way longer. Um, okay, let's have, uh, let's just have our search bar. Um, now, search bar, we do need a, I guess there's like an on. How do you submit it though? I guess we could have an on change. Uh, we also, can we do an auto focus here? Yeah, let's make it auto focus to it. When you come, auto change, on change, what is this? This has a string. We'll just call it like value. And um, yeah, what we want to do here is do our ref dot read. We are going to be throttling this, but for now, let's just see if this works. Anytime it changes, we're going to go ref dot read um, our, uh, what was it? Is a place, Google place search provider dot notifier dot query dot search dot search. And here we'll pass in value, which we're going to make this cleaner, but let's just see if this even works. So I'm going to save that. We're going to go new. We're going to start searching for a place. Uh, let's search for the, um, Rogers Center. So yeah, stuff's coming back. Now that we just made a ton of API calls there, right? Because um, every change it's going. So there's a couple things we can do. We can um, first of all, like you know, we probably want to do something like if value dot is empty, you know, we're just going to um, and in fact, let's actually make a void function called clear, just so if it goes to empty, we can actually clear the results. And for that, we can just go state equals empty list. Um, so here we would just go, if it's empty, we would go, well, let's actually make access. Let's, uh, oh, we already have the private provider, right? Yeah. So we could have actually just done provider dot search here. We'll do provider dot clear and we'll want to return it. So it doesn't actually do this. Now for searching, we want to throttle this. Um, and I, um, could look at a, uh, recent project on how to do that. I forget how, or we could ask our friend chat GPT. I'm just gonna make a new chat uh, in Flutter. I want to throttle uh, throttle or a debounce, really a debounce. There's a slight difference between it. Um, throttle is like it can only happen, you know, a certain amount of times in a second or whatever. Debounce is like it's going to wait a little bit after a few change after one change to see if any other changes happen and only call it you know at the end of those that cycle of changes and that's really what we want here uh, i want to debounce a um, text form field on change event so let's just see what our chat gpt guy says and um yeah import that um debounce text field Ugh. It's kind of an annoying way to do it. Let's see what's actually going on here. Like, I feel like we don't need to do it as a stateful thing. Um, but we do need, I'm just going to ask. It 
Is this possible? Let us see if we'll widget. If we have to, we will. Oh, there we go. By using a stream in the RX Dart package. Yeah, that makes sense. I've done that before too. Um, I don't know if I want to bring RX Dart into this um, just for this one thing, but it kind of is the perfect solution here because this is just a stateless widget. Um, maybe we bring it on. And then what's this? Uh, text editing controller. Okay, so they there's an extension essentially. Debounce text field. Yeah, it's a lot. Let's um let's think about that. But what we'll do is we'll actually um we're going to extract this search bar. So we can go like this and extract this widget, and let's just call it um, debounce. Um, debounceable, debouncing search bar. Um, yeah, let's just call it that. Um, I'm going to keep it in the same file for now, but we'll probably move this to its own thing. Um, because also, I want to make this more agnostic. So instead of a provider being passed in, uh, we're going to have a function that is a string um, uh, that will be um, on. Um, I guess we can call it on change because that's what it's called here on changed and then we'll actually go require this dot on change instead of this so here um, we would actually you know end up calling our on changed event uh, which we'll edit in a bit um, and we're going to get rid of these things meanwhile up here what we would do is pass in on changed value and we kind of want to do that same logic we had before, which of course I just erased, uh, but we can remember what it is. Uh, we want to go provider.clear in the case that it's empty. So I still want to like call the event if, um, even if empty comes back, because then we can actually clear it in this case. And otherwise we go provider.search uh, for value. Okay, so we'll come back to that, but let's see how this works. So we need to convert this to now a stateful widget. Um, convert to stateful widget, look at that. And we're going to have a debouncer. Um, I don't know if we need the controller. Oh, I guess controller, what's, what is the controller used for? We might not need the controller. We need at least this, we'll, we'll find out. Um, so we'll just grab this guy here. It'll be a timer, which comes from the async package. Then um, on search change. So basically we get our, if debounce, yeah. So this is the logic we really want. Um, we wanna go, if debounce is active, um, it, or you know, false. We're gonna cancel. We're <laughs> we're basically gonna cancel it if the debounce is active, uh, or is yeah. Um, otherwise, we're gonna grab this right here, and we're going to run our widget dot on changed, and we want to pass in the value. We don't care about this. We're gonna always you know run it so that we can get that. Okay. So now that we have this, let's just see if this debouncer is working. So let's just go print. Um, test one or uh, let's just go change. Uh, I'm also just going to get rid of these so we don't clutter the logs with all this and let's just save everything and let's go back and let's just I'm just going to try button mashing so see we see change happens quite a bit after when I stop which is exactly what we want we don't want the user on every character change to do it and even if I erase everything oh that's the wrong key even if I erase everything which is a little bit annoying to do in the simulator we see it's there. Perfect. So that's working. Um, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of this. And let's do this. Okay. Um, let's test her out. Toronto. We see it comes in. And everything's good. Now, I don't, we don't have any way actions we can do here. Uh, let's just make this a tiny bit um, better for now in our search component. Uh, let us wrap this with a card. We can also do something like a subtitle where we can have text of place dot address, but let's give it a max line of one and an overflow of text overflow dot ellipse, just so it doesn't, you know, start taking up a bunch of space. Um, so we'll search for, our, let's search for something that's like, oops, <laughs> hey, that's work. So now we have this sort of thing here and people will be able to click this and then get to the next page. And that's, I think, where we're going to leave it right now. Um, let us um, actually move this to a... Um, core component. Um, we're going to be probably making changes to it, allowing it to have like, you know, um, probably we'll pass through things like whether it's a uh, auto um, focus and maybe like hint text and all that kind of stuff. 
But uh, let's actually move this into libcore components and we'll call it uh, debouncing um, search bar dot dart. We'll paste that there, import in the things we need, which is these two things, timer. Okay, we're good. And then we have to go back here, of course, and import that from the other file. And now we're good. All right, I'm gonna leave it with that. Um, I think that was a lot of good stuff. Um, just a quick review. Uh, you know, we essentially are working with the Google Places API um, directly through its RESTful API, as opposed to using any Dart packages, completely server side, which means we don't have to deal with any core issues. Um, and um, we're, yeah, we're normalizing that data into our own model that we made called Google Place. Here's the generated code for it, but of course we only had to do it by uh, creating a spy.yaml that uh, has the fields we want and what type of value they are. Um, so there's still more to do here. I think in the next video, we'll actually take this and put it into the flow of creating a um, venue. Um, because remember, we can actually, although I can't get to it now because we replaced it, uh, we'll be able to you know, use the data coming back to pre-fill certain things, uh, such as the address and the name, and let the users fill out the other things if they, if they wish. But I think that's a nice flow, um, and um, it'll be cool. So thanks for watching, and um, see you guys in the next video.